Yes. It was so fun on my last interview with you. At the end of it, you said, well, it would be nice to have you back again. And I said, well, I have a friend, Al, <laughs> and he has a great story to tell. And that's how this all evolved, that we get to be with you again today. Well, I'm so glad that you're here and also that you come back, Esther, and that you're here finally. Al, that's one of the things I love about this lifestyle is because you get to make new friends. Yes. Right? And people, and it's especially fun when you find a friend that has the same views about certain things, especially if it centers around food, that makes it even more fun. So why don't you kind of tell us how, how you guys met? Because oh, because you're plant based, well, right? As Esther uh, reminds me, I crashed one of her parties. <laughs> you did. <laughs> a, yes, a friend of mine, a fr mutual friend, sent us, uh, sent me an email that she had sent out that she was having a celebration at Whole Foods after being uh, Whole Food plant based for one year. And, and that was in July. And July was my anniversary for being whole food plant-based for one year. So I could not go. I mean, I had to go. And it was at Whole Foods. And as far as I knew, that wasn't a private club. So I just went and crashed it. And then I introduced myself to her. And in about 30 seconds, I had met my little sister that I never wanted. And she's just delightful. We have so much in common. And we get together and we talk on the phone a lot. And because we have, uh, although she was, her journey is different than mine, and, but uh, she for different reasons, but together we have so much in common. Both, of, I will say in my, and when I talk about my journey, that anything worth doing is worth doing to wretched excess. And she says the same thing, only different. But I mean, we, we have the sim similar attitudes and we both were successful. Yes, that's right. Really yes, yeah, success. That's very inspiring. Yeah. And I just want to tell our viewers, I mean, some of some people do, do know each of you from seeing you maybe on other broadcasts, but you're married, but not to each other. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know that we could be married to each other. <laughs> <laughs> we're, both, we're both too much of an A type personality. Yes. I think. And I'm not going to tell you what the A stands for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. yeah, that's true. Sometimes you need a little balance when you ha when you, yes. when you live yeah. with someone versus yeah. when you have a friendship because you Definitely. can you can go home and do your thing. Yeah. <laughs> right. And so it worked out really well today because Dottie stayed home and because she's busy getting ready for a trip. That's his yes. Al's wife. And my husband took this opportunity to go to the gym. So he'll be back shortly. But anyway, so it gave us a chance to have some quietness here. <laughs> we were on one one broadcast one time, and Ben and Dottie were sitting over on the couch just yapping away. And yeah. um, they thought they were being quiet. But yeah. yeah. The microphone picks it all up. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's well, get... so, so I told our audience to be expecting a really great story. And Al, I mean, Esther has a great story about her weight loss, and she did share that with us on a previous broadcast, and I'll share the links to that. But Al, you have a wonderful story, too. Yes. That's very inspiring. So okay. go ahead. All right. So at 80 years old, I had end-stage coronary artery disease. And if that sounds serious, it is serious. And literally... At 80, I had months to live, not years. And I could just see my activities going down, the things that I could do. It, uh, tell us how old you are now. 86. 86. Okay. Uh, so that was a while ago that you had months. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. the difference in my life is incredible. I can do all sorts of things that I couldn't even think of 10 years ago, much less six years ago. Uh, but it didn't come on overnight. It's like you didn't have your <clears throat> uh, <Epiphany. obese laughs> the blimp problem yeah. just overnight. It, 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 it took you a while to get there. Well, um, I had, uh, and when I, in 1985, when I was 48 years old, I had five vessel 
coronary, uh, um, whatever, cabbage, they call it cabbage. They go in and they muck around inside. And it was the most traumatic experience of your life. It felt like they had put me in a gunny sack. All my ex-wives came and beat me over the head and shoulders with their baseball bats. And then they threw me down the stairs. And I said, I don't ever want to do that again. So I went on, and this was back in uh, 85, I went on what I thought was a low fat diet because at the time, well, currently people are eating 35 to 45% of their diet, their caloric intake in fat. So I thought I can do better than that. So I thought I'll cut it down to 20 to 25. And for, for the most part, I was successful. Um, I cheated on, um, desserts because I love desserts, but I, I learned to read labels and everything. And I'm convinced to this day that that small dietary change enabled me to get to 80. Now getting to 80 was not an easy thing. My father had died at 59 and boy, my 60th birthday was a big party. I mean, oh, yeah. I, I, that was really big, but think about it. He, he, I ate the way my father ate. He had to have meat at every meal, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And he also had to have a dessert at every meal. And I inherited, not the genes, I inherited those eating habits. The uh, recipes. And, yes, and a lot of the recipes, that's right. Yeah, that's so, what they say. That re that's, it's, not, it's not the genes that you have to worry about that run in your family. It's the recipes. That's right. And, but, you know, I, it's funny, my dad loved steak and I didn't, I gave it up very early, but I would eat, I, I can remember before that operation, my favorite lunch was cheeseburgers with a banana milkshake. I mean, doesn't that sound healthy? No. Banana. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So, um, I, I retired, moved up to uh, Sacramento area, and uh, I had a heart attack in 2005 while bicycling. And so they put a stint in, and I was terrified that they were going to uh, give me another bypass surgery, but they didn't. They put a stint in, but it was it was no big deal. If anybody, and I'm sure there's people out there that have had stints put in, the, the medical society loves to do it because they, they put you in the hospital, they put the stint in, they, this was back uh, where it was much difficult, more difficult than it is now, and they would put it in, and you get up in the next, um, not maybe not the next day, but the day after you go home, and there's, there's no big deal, and it was not traumatic. When I had uh, the bypass surgery, I was laid up for six months. I couldn't drive a car because they split your chest open and then they staple it closed with titanium staples, which are always there when I get an x-ray. But you couldn't, I couldn't drive a car because the only car I had, this was before power steering. It wasn't, you know, I had uh, you know, automatic and all, but it didn't have power steering. So I couldn't drive for three to four months. And uh, that ate. In fact, it still will ache uh, when it uh, when we have a storm or something. You know, I get it's it's a weak part of my body. That's, you don't want to have that. You don't want to have any of this stuff. Uh, as an aside, most people have three arteries that that go to their heart and provide the blood. I only have one. The other two have occluded. Oh. They're they're gone. And yet I still go out and do everything I want to do. So it's, it's amazing. All right. So let me, let me jump well, ahead. Before you go ahead, yeah. people love our game. We have a game that we play and okay. it's called true or false. And we're going to go ahead and, and do that because then we can start in with your, the rest of your story. It's sure. time for true or false on be green with Amy live answer true or false to Amy's questions in the comments below. And Amy will ask our guest for the expert answer. Okay, so we were talking about heart disease, and we're going to get into your healing story pretty soon. But I'm going to ask our audience to type in the answer, what they think it is, true or false. And then we'll talk to Esther and Al and see what they have to say. True or false, heart disease is the number one killer epidemic. What do you say, 
guys, you can type it in. Okay, now we're going to ask Alan Esther, you want to answer that? Yes, it's true. 640,000 people die in the United States every year. It's number one. Yes. Over, wow. COVID, over COVID, over, over COVID. everything. And I think, I think, believe cancer is number two, but there's all sorts of cancers. So that's, you know, to put them all together. But yes, absolutely. Yes. That, Sorry, isn't that, I, it is amazing. I yeah. my, and you know, I had personal experience with that. <laughs> I almost died. Right. Right. Okay. And then you're going to be talking about your healing journey. So, and we're going to, talk about how the you adopted a plant-based lifestyle but let's talk about that a plant-based diet doesn't just prevent heart disease but it can manage and sometimes even reverse it true or false and people are typing in their answers and what do you say what do i say yeah I, well obviously i'm here <laughs> that's the first proof i had um, I, I i literally had months to live i, I I, I'll have to, in the story, I'll tell you part of it, but that's the first thing. The second thing is I also had kidney, my kidneys were not functioning full. I only had 40% kidney functioning. And a, after two months on this lifestyle, on this diet, my kidneys came back to normal. Mm -hmm. And the and the they had told me I had gone to a full day class at Kaiser. And they said, there's nothing you can do. All we want to do is to keep you off of dialysis. I said, oh, yeah, I want to keep off of dialysis. I'm so. Absolutely. Yeah, wow. You can reverse it. And uh, my cholesterol went from a high of 250. And the last time I had it checked, which was a couple months ago, it's 118. So wow. it came down in two months. It came down from the one to 250 to uh, 150, which is what Dr. Eshelston says is healthy. So wow. that's when when your your cholesterol comes down to 150, then your body can get in and heal itself. Mm -hmm. It can renew itself. The body has an amazing ability to heal itself if you will just let it. Mm -hmm. If you will just quit putting bad things in. Okay. Well, you gave a little hint to the next question, but I still want everybody to chime in. True or false, a plant-based diet can help improve several risk factors for yeah. heart disease, including high blood pressure, high cholesterol, atherosclerosis, which is narrowing of the arteries, and inflammation. And apparently, it can even help... <laughs> your kidneys. <laughs> True or false, guys, you can type it in. And what do you say, Esther and Al? Oh, I think it's great. In fact, um, even though my story kind of centers around weight loss, it's just amazing. Tell them about the oh, eyes. Oh, yes. Anyway, there's so many incidences that I had, too. And if we have time, I'll read them all off. But the, the real surprise thing was that by eating a clean diet, you know, as nearly as nearly to 100% as I was capable of doing, it even reversed my vision, you know, and that's the thing that uh, we don't often talk about, but by eating what the body needs, plants and, and fruits and vegetables and grains and beans, uh, consistently over time, my eye, eye problem, I had several eye problems, but I went to the doctor and he said, uh, he, he was ready to do eye surgery. And I said, well, I just have this idea and where I got it, I'm not sure, that eating this way is going to help my eyes too. So I repeatedly went back to the doctor every six months and he kept saying, your vision is getting better, getting better. And then finally, right. after three years, I said, well, sometimes I wear my glasses just to protect my eyes. And is that something I should be doing? And surprise of all surprise, he said, with your eyesight, you don't even need to wear glasses. So I went to our Department of Motor Vehicle, had my eyes tested, and they took it off. And I had been wearing glasses for over 30 years, maybe 40 years in contacts and even bifocals. So, you know, yes, so this eating can heal almost, I mean, I think it heals everything. Now, there might be some strange, strange circumstances where people have a different biology or a different body or they've had some damage done to their bodies. But 
you know, it's just the answer. But back to you, Dal, Al. Because and now back to you, Al. Yeah. <laughs> it, it cured the wax in my ears. Yes. Isn't that amazing? I, isn't that silly? Well, I thought I'd throw that in there. Well, good, because somebody could be having an earwax problem. And <laughs> yeah, I was. I was. I have to do the thing. Ear, 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 ear thing Irrigation. Mm -hmm. Week in the shower or else I couldn't hear. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So what, okay, so what, we'll let you continue, Al. Now that we had that little fun break of questions. Yeah. All right. So where 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 are we? I've lost so, track. So then, so then you went to the hospital. Your last your last heart attack. Oh yeah, the last. I didn't have no. Let's see. All in all, if you look at the whole thing, I've had uh, two heart attacks. I've had three stents put in, and I've had bypass surgery. And none of them did any good, Not in, in, which if I, you know, you can't ever go back in life, but too bad, I can't. All right, so what happened was I was supposed to go to uh, my grandniece's wedding back in, back east, and I couldn't get on the plane because I was having terrible chest pains. So they put a stint, another stint. This was the third one. They had put two or three in before. None of them did anything, but yet they keep putting them in. Yeah. So it didn't help. So I didn't go and I did, I missed the wedding and I felt really bad about that. But, uh, and I, I, and I was still, I was, a, I was literally, as Dr. Eshelson calls it, a cardiac cripple. Mm -hmm. I live in a two story house and it's really expensive to buy a new house in a single story. So I spent a whole lot of money and put stair lifts in the house. And I, I, my driveway is on a very slight incline and I could take the trash out because gravity was helping me. But I literally couldn't push the, the, the empty The empty can. on wheels. I couldn't push them back up. I couldn't walk from from well you can't see that there's a door behind me you can see that i couldn't literally couldn't walk that without having crippling angina pains so i was a mess yeah so you don't want to really leave home because well, all you know. i could do at home was sit in front of the computer or watch tv and i don't like tv and i you know i mean right. you can't ex that's not an existence it's no. horrible and i'm basically an outdoor kind of guy i like to go out i like to walk i like to hike not strenuous hiking, but, mm -hmm. you know, gentle hikes. And uh, I like to go to the desert and uh, just what we like to travel. So uh, after they put the last stint in, uh, Kaiser says, well, would you like to go to rehab? Well, throw a drowning man a, a wrap. Yes, I'll go. I'll do anything. So I go to rehab. My, my wife takes me there because I'm really not comfortable driving. And, uh, you know, I, I walk in like an old man, like an 81 year old man. <laughs> and um, first half it was about exercise. I got, oh my Lord, I was so depressed at this point. I was looking up at the curb, I was so depressed. Exercise, yes, we wanna get your heart rate up. Get it up, I just wanna keep it going. Mm -hmm. He said, oh no, no, we gotta get it up. And said, so, all right, so, you know, so I sit through that. And then next, <laughs> the next stage, yeah, there's a little intermission. And the next stage, this lady comes out, this nurse comes out, and she says, I'm here to tell you about a whole food plant-based diet. And she's fat. And I'm going, oh, my God, bury me now. I'm never going to last. My father, I think I mentioned, passed away at 50. I know I mentioned 59. And I thought he was fat. Well, he wore, I wear a size 40 regular uh, in a sport coat. And he wore a 42. I mean, he was just stocky. Yeah. By, by today's standard, he wouldn't. Oh, be, yeah, he wouldn't have been. Yeah. This was in the 40s, uh, in the 50s, a long time ago. And so I've always uh, been terrified of being, being fat because my father died. And I, I just, you know, you don't, you, you don't think. You put it together. That's why he died. Mm -hmm. So I'm going, oh, my God, this isn't going to work. Then she says, but I'm not on it. But they recommend. They don't even recommend. We suggest you go on it. Okay, there's something good. So she passes out a whole bunch of papers. And on that paper, there is this. And you can't see it, but it's an angiogram. It's a reverse coronary artery disease. And in one, let's see if I can yeah. do this. Yeah, one, we can that, see it. Mm -hmm. This is a clue. Oops, this is occluded. 
and the other one it isn't. And tell everybody I, what occluded is because you've learned all this technically. Uh, it's, uh, it's stopped, stopped, stopped up. up, stopped up. Yeah. up right. I'm using, I, I've been to the medicine department so many times. Yeah, so yeah, you're, you're like almost practicing medicine. So, so yeah. shows again that that one one of them is occluded, which is that one, and the uh, other one is not. This is the same person that this had is a the scan. Same person and the the dates between the two were were only thirty two months, not three years. Now that doesn't seem like much, but at the time I looked at this and I thought. I don't know if I could live three years. I did, my life expectancy in my mind was right. not that long. So I thought, well, here's this gave me hope. This gave me a chance. I think, oh goodness gracious, the good Lord has has given open a window for me. So I'm going to see if I could do that. So I then and there decided, decided to make I made the commitment to go on a whole food plant-based diet. Now, I had no idea how to do that. I mean, it was just beyond the pale for me. I don't cook. My wife is uh, not a whole food plant-based person. She is now, but she wasn't there. So in that same presentation, they suggested three books. The first book was the book that saved my life, and it is Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease by Dr. Eshelston. And I said, okay, that was my Bible. I took that and I said, okay, that's going to help. The second book, which was kind of a charming title, How Not to Die by Dr. Michael Greger. Well, in the first page of that book, which is the, the preface, he explains why he went into medicine. It's because his 65-year-old grandmother was sent home from the hospital in a wheelchair with coronary artery disease. And they said, there's nothing we can do for you. Go home, set your, get your affairs in order, and die. They didn't tell her the second part. And she proceeded to get herself to California and went into Dr. Pritikin, not doctor, he's out of, uh, into Pritikin Institute, where in four weeks, she was out walking 10 miles and she lived until she was 96. And that inspired me, that gave me hope. And the last book they suggested was the China study by T. Colin Campbell. And it was a study, uh, uh, Chow and Lai, I believe, was the primary at the time. And he was dying of cancer. So as a humanitarian gesture, he went to the United States and got permission for T. Colin to, uh, to, to run a study in Ch all of China, not just part of it, to find out what everybody eats and make the correlations between what they eat and what diseases they got. Well, I have a background in science, and uh, as an aside, I trained the first monkey that went into space. <laughs> I like to throw that out there. And um, so that spoke to me. And I was very, it's a very difficult book to read. In fact, I've only met one person that's actually, <laughs> has, besides me, that has read it. And uh, so that spoke to me. So I knew, because when, you, when you're dying, you're really susceptible to scams. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, I, you know, look at, look at this. I'll, you buy this fruit and eat this or this pills or whatever. So that sort of took it out of me. Plus we had three different scientists from three different disciplines from three different uh, geographic areas that all came together. And essentially they all say the same thing with 99% of all the same. So I went, on the diet, it was tough. I really had no help. And four weeks later, I went up to Tahoe, which is at 6,000 feet. And I, uh, I had a healthy diet. I brought my own salad dressing and I walked a mile up there at 6,000 feet. And I climbed three flights, of, two flights of stairs, which I couldn't do at home. So, because uh, once you become disabled like that, you don't test it. You think, oh no, I, I'm gonna, I don't want these terrible pains. So I would use the stair lifts, even though I didn't know this, I didn't need to. So that was, you know, that was it. So basically, uh, you, you said that the 
the things that um, that I do. Like I okay, let me give you. I have it's a short thing, but this is all the things. These are the results of this lifestyle for me. I can do all the activities that I used to do, and uh, and I enjoy them. I'm 86 years old, and I can climb stairs, walk distance, ride cycles. Um, I have a recumbent because I'm late because I don't like to ride a two wheel bicycle because if you ride for an hour, an hour and a half, you get back, you have to have the bicycle seat surgically removed. Exactly, from your butt. Yeah. And so it's just uncomfortable. So I have one that's, it's like a lawn chair. It's very comfortable, but I go out for two and a half, for an hour, hour and a half. We go 20, 25 miles. Now it is an e-bike, but you still pedal. Yes. And you can, you can adjust the, the, uh, the, the assist I, on it. I love those. I don't have one, but I always thought it would be wonderful. Because once sometimes you, ride, you get a little one, Once ambitious. you ride one, you will buy it. They're, they're, yeah. They're because you get ambitious. You want to go far, but then you have to say, okay, I have to remember that as, well, however far I go, I have to have get to back. back. <laughs> yeah. And I have a lot of hills in my area. So. Ah, yeah. So I mentioned my cholesterol went from 250 to 118. My, I wasn't worried about my weight. I, I'm, I, I, I thought I was 5'11". I'm 5'10", and I weighed 180. So I thought, well, I'm 10 pounds overweight. I went from, I went from 180 to 150 in two months, and now I'm at 137. My, as I said, mentioned earlier about my kidney functions, they went 40% to normal. I don't get as how, many. How tall are you, Al? How tall? I'm, I'm 5'10". I used to be 5'11". I a, know. I figure I wore it off my uh, feet because my head still, my hair still up there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now here's one that you, you ladies are going to be totally uninterested in. My PSA went from seven to three point eight, and then I just had it tested recently. It went from it's to one point three, and now uh, that's a big deal. PSA, in case you don't know, it is. Uh, Something, I don't know, it has to do with um, your uh, prostate, male prostate. So you ladies don't have anything to do with that. Well, not directly. <laughs> so the, people that, the people that we love. So it's yeah. good to know. The number of daily pills I was taking down from uh, 20 back down to 8. I still have GERD, which I ruined my, um, my stomach on my own. It didn't need uh, anything else to do that. Now, my mental acuity, and this is, I've really noticed this, and it keeps getting better. My wife has always thought I was an ass. Now she thinks I'm a smart ass. Yeah. But I noticed that I can give this presentation easier, and I've never had a good memory, so I can't all blame it on that. Now, no more ambulance rides. I used to go, I think it was 14 or 15. I took an emergency to the ER six times in the first six months that I had, you know, they were punching my car and saying, oh yeah, there's Al, how you doing? They said, you know, I've been in this house. I, they <laughs> recognize me. Now that's more than embarrassing. It's terrifying. Yeah, uh, it's terrifying. Absolutely. Yeah. And, well, that, and the they said the worst is, thing is stress. Yes. The GERD mimics that I said, have it, still have it. The GERD mimics uh, angina. Uh, angina. Yes. It, Terrible. It, it just will drive you crazy. Right. But a lot of the, the side, like you said, side effects from lots of different kinds of medications oh, that have eaten exactly. away at your digestive lining. And, yeah. you know, there's just, which, I mean, it's good that you're telling us this because we're not claiming that this is a mir miraculous thing that, that everything will go away. But you've oh. had such great improvements, you know, it's definitely it, it, worth the, it. The things that go away will surprise, they surprised me. All I wanted was mobility, as just yes. as you did. I it, that's the part I was looking for. I, the weight was oh, that's fine, but I wasn't trying to lose weight at all. Uh, all right, so I have much more energy. You may have not. Well, yeah. you, you didn't. You the people now didn't know me back then. Yeah. And now here's one that I get up every day, and I ble I am blessed with this. I thank the Lord. I don't have aches and pains. I'm 86 years old. And when I get up out of bed, now I do some stretching exercise, about eight minutes worth. And that's it. I'm good. I don't, because I don't drink coffee. And, but no aches and pain. I, because I still have all my carnivore friends. 
because uh, they're hard to get rid of. <laughs> <laughs> and we and they go out to dinner and they say, oh, I got this bursitis. I got this thing and my butt about it, butt about it, you know, and I go, I feel good. Yeah. Oh, I, I don't do that. And here's the big one. This is, and I don't know that that many people will relate to this, but I have peace of mind. I'm not waiting for the big one. There's not this big lightning bolt over my head waiting to fall and uh, because i did that all through my 60s and 70s my, again my father died early and it, you, you you can't get somebody on the news just died of a heart attack so once you have coronary uh, once you know you have heart problems you know you're going to die of that now i'm not going to live forever but it's not how long you live, it's how well you live. Dr. Goldhammer says that the last six years of most people, they are infirmed. They can't, their life isn't, they don't have any quality of life. And so I don't know, the last six years, and I say this in all honesty, the last six years of my life are better in the, any six years within the last 25 years of my life. And it's hard to say, I mean, it's not like I'm getting younger and I know I'm getting old because I can't crawl under the, the sink to fix my faucet anymore. I had to call a plumber to do that. And it just burned me. It just, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, uh, it's, it, it, you just can't, and Esther has it too. You, you have this new outlook on life. And people say, and people will look at us and they'll say, well, how is it that you don't ever cheat? Or how is it, aren't you tempted? Well, no, I'm te am I tempted not to have pains and aches? Am I tempted yeah. to have, to be a cripple? No, well, who is tempted for that? So. Yes, absolutely. And, and that's, I think it's because of the food addiction that people just have, they need to get over that part of it. And, and, they, and that's and, hard. I, yeah. She pointed, I never knew I was addicted. I thought, oh, I'm not addicted. Well, I am. But not as badly as I think as well, you are. Well, I think the difference is that Al never was obese. No. You know, and I think that's important to point out <clears throat> that just because you're not obese or morbidly obese doesn't mean you have a good heart. Yes. And so there are lots of svelte, thin athletes even, who uh, perform very well, but are not exempt from a heart attack. Right, exactly. And most often if somebody is slim, it may be because they have some kind of a digestive problem or maybe, maybe other things uh, too, but well, yes, it doesn't really, prevent you from having heart disease. Some people really are strict on not eating. I, I'm, I know people that just eat just a tiny little. I look. I said, "How the heck can you exist?" But they're, yet they're slim. Yeah. And but the, what they eat is a little bit, a little bit of potato chips, uh -huh. a little bit of just un, really unhealthy food. I'm going. Uh, yeah. Well, some people, I know some people that food is just not a domineering thing in their life. You know, they are in balance. Maybe they have enough uh, motivation or enough, um, what am I, you know, uh, when your body, metabolism yes. that burns differently, yes. you know, and some people have a different mindset where they haven't really used food to soothe their troubled soul, so to speak. And, uh, but, you know, just because you're slim doesn't mean that you're healthy. And so I, I think it's really important that we all can learn better ways of eating whole food to uh, nourish our bodies and heal our bodies and to boost our immune system. That's really important too. I, and I did, since this concludes my portion, I suspect, uh, I want you to go here and I have all sorts of videos. And we'll put a link to that because you put up a website. And, you know, when you do these things, when you get adopt this lifestyle, as I am doing this broadcast, you want to tell the world because you have seen the results of the healing. And so you made this w website, Staying Alive, WFPB, which stands for yeah. Whole Food Plant-Based. We're going to have a link in the notes for everybody, but go ahead, Al. Well, after I, after four, after two months on this diet, I couldn't believe the difference it had made. 
And so I went out and bought 10 copies of the three books I told you about each 10 copies each. And I gave them to friends and loved ones and relatives. And two of the, two of the, uh, uh, two of the people that I gave them to the friends had Parkinson's disease. And we know now that this will stop Parkinson's in its track. It won't necessarily uh, reverse it, but it will stop it in its tracks. And both of those, one was uh, Dottie's brother and another was a good friend of mine. And uh, the one who's a good friend of mine is what, after he passed away, the wife brought, he says, we never looked at it. You can give this to somebody else. And that really shakes you up. That, that's just, you feel so bad. But I have learned that you can't care more about other people's health than they do. You know, yes. I, I, my family, it's just, I, it, it just tears me up. But what can you do? I'm here now, for an example. But. Now, your wife, you had said that initially she was not on board. Now, is she, she, but she is I, now, you say? Not only is she on board, but she had um, a, in uh, 2015, she had cancer of the liver. And so was this after you had adopted the lifestyle, but yet she no, was not on no, okay. I didn't All right, so go ahead. until 16. 16, and, okay. And in fact, in 15 was a bad year for her. She had a stroke and cancer of the liver. I went on the diet, and of course, I'm thinking, and, and with basically no help. She says, well, I'll cook whatever you want, but she didn't have any idea what to cook. Yeah. So um, 2018 rolls around. And of course I see the tremendous improvement in me. So I say, honey, you want to try this diet? Oh, I, you know, I, I can't eat the way you do. I don't have the self-control. I don't have the willpower. I said, all right. Yeah, I, I was not quite as, as nice as you were. <laughs> oh, man, I'm kind of a, a nasty, gnarly, evil codger. So, <laughs> So she uh, 2018 comes back and it comes back in her lungs. So now oh. she has, it's metastasized. She's got stage four cancer. And of course, when I mentioned this to her, she said, no, no, I don't know. It's not, it's not. She, and she admits now she was in denial, but yeah. the combination of the cancer and of me beating her about the head and shoulders verbally, at least, uh, she decided to go on the diet and she's totally whole food plant-based now. She's not as restrict, although she's getting better day by day because I don't say anything. But I get a lot of advice from. Yeah, my sometimes people. you yeah. sometimes you have to be quiet and just yeah, yeah. yeah. that's, that's really the hardest hard thing to do. It's hard for me to be quiet. <laughs> so uh, she's now on it, and um, she uh, the last uh, year and uh, yeah maybe a year she's been cancer free. And no oh, new ones have come up, so uh, you got to have her on the show. Well, she does. <laughs> very she, inspiring. I, the opposite, you know, the two, two yeah. your your spouse is not like me. She is mm -hmm. not. Yeah. She's not yeah. a blowhard. <laughs> <laughs> she's a beautiful, beautiful she's woman. Very, she's she, a wonderful cook, and now that she is a boy, oh, I mean, we had the simplest dinner last night. Just steamed vegetables and uh, broccoli and uh, a little tiny baked uh, potatoes, the, you know, the, the, the mini, mini, mini potatoes. Oh, oh, those are good. She knows how to season things. And, oh, yes. so good. Yeah. And that's the thing. When you first adopt this lifestyle, things probably don't taste very good at all. And no. you still, yeah, but, but, and people don't realize that your taste buds, they renew themselves and you neuroadapt and, and your body and your mind everything changes if you just yeah. give it a chance it will it will change and you will start liking the food and actually looking forward to it yeah. and I, not miss the I other foods at dinner i said i because i it was so savory to me and she enjoyed it we both enjoyed it and i said would you believe that 10 years ago both of us would have thought this would oh. be a terrible dinner and how could you enjoy <laughs> it no meat you know no yeah, salt exactly. we don't we use salt Okay, so that's another thing that um, I wanted to talk about uh, because now just clarify for those that may be watching or listening, whole food plant-based means eating what or not eating what? Let's it means clarify. no. Oh, you want it? Okay. Uh, well, I can give you Dr. Eshelston's diet, which 
Esther will give you uh, Dr. Dr. McDougall's <laughs> diet, but they're based essentially the same. Dr. Eschel, and I'm quoting here, Dr. Eschel says you may not eat anything with a mother or a face. That's him being the smart ass, not me, which means no meat, poultry, or fish. And then you may not consume oil of any kind, not a drop. Then I took it first, uh, farther, and I don't want any oil in any of my food, any of the ingredients. And you can't have uh, uh, any dairy products, which essentially is just meat products. Mm -hmm. Can eat not nuts or avocados because Esther will tell you they are high in caloric density mm -hmm. and they are so high in fat. No sugar because the body just turns that to fat. And then he also wants you to keep low fat, keep the fat content between nine and 11 percent, which is about 10 percent. And if you read the China study, you will see that uh, societies and cultures that have less that have 10 percent of fat in their diet don't get all the the uh, diseases that western people get and then how do you do this it's very easy you avoid processed food yeah. mm -hmm. so. if, it's, if it's made in a, if it's if it is a plant eat it if it's made in a plant <laughs> be careful yeah. and if yeah. you, it, 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 well how do you tell how much fat it, it, easy if it has a label on it don't eat it <laughs> Yes, exactly. And that sounds kind of challenging, but it's it just amazing how we, we find our way and the food that we eat probably is is much more interesting than food that we used to eat because we have such a variety of things. Well, your taste buds become more sensitive. I, I can now taste a melody of flavors in the food. Uh, particularly Dottie's really a good cook so I can before you just taste salt oil and sugar that's all you tasted but now you can just all these delicate little flavors and you taste subtle things that you never tasted yeah. before because salt oil and, and textures too and textures too yes yeah, that's true mm -hmm. absolutely yeah. so, so um Angel wants to know do you do juicing um I, I periodically I will yes some people uh, juicing or smoothie I'll do They're both different. I know like, yes they are they're big different but she I was trying to answer the juicing go ahead <laughs> <laughs> so yes I, I I have periodically because I after it's a journey that you go on and one of the important part of the journey is education educating yourself and so I I was so successful in the first couple of years in this journey by just eliminating all the bad things that I just read to you. And so then I started thinking, because at my age, I want my body to last as long as I can. So I want to introduce into it beneficial nutrients. Mm -hmm. So I, and I don't know exactly what I'm doing, but somebody, my doctor said, well, why don't you do this juicing? It was celery and uh, ginger and a bunch of things. So I did that for a while. And, and I will periodically try different things because I, I basically, I get tired of just drinking water. So I want to have something. Uh, so I'll alternate with juice and sometimes I'll alternate with smoothies. Smoothies are bad because they're high caloric. Mm -hmm. But I don't worry about putting weight on. I, it's really hard for me to put weight on. Right, and but it's something that the ju the juicing typically it's not sugar laden. It's more vegetables, and you might put a, yes. a little something. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So um, Jen wants to know what what do you eat in a day? Me or her. Yeah. Well, you can both go. I mean, Esther's okay. just been sitting there. We'll we'll have okay. her talk and give you a little break. What do you eat right. today, Esther? Uh, what do I eat today? Well, I'm doing something different now than I did uh, have done in the last almost six years, and that's that I'm uh, starting my day out with a glass of warm water, and then I grow into a glass of warm water with some blended and frozen lemons. I put the whole lemon in the Vitamix, pour it into ice cube trays and make them frozen. I plop one of those into my warm water every day. And now that gets me until noon. So my breakfast is 
breaking my fast, if you will, between 11 and 12, because I've determined I don't want my body at age almost 79 to have to work so hard. And the less time I spend eating, the more time my body has to heal. At least that's my belief system. So yeah. then I start, start around noon and I eat, I eat fruit and vegetables and grains and beans. And so uh, today we're going to have a big pot of vegetable soup followed by a fruit salad. And I get to come for lunch. <laughs> yeah, that's right. and, the, and so I, the, the, we had, can call that friends with benefits. And so I, I have, like yesterday, I ate my first thing was I roasted some sweet potatoes in the oven at 400 for an hour. So I had a nice big sweet mm. potato before I went out for lunch because I was going to a bar and grill. Mm where I did not expect to have much choices. So I took my own salad dressing, which is three parts uh, balsamic vinegar, two parts Dijon mustard, and one part lemon or orange juice. I took that with me, hoping they would at least have a salad because they make all these big fancy salads with meat on top. But anyway, so that's what I ended up having was a garden salad and took my own dressing. And I took another potato in my purse. And then when I got home, I ate a third potato and then I had some broccoli and some green beans and some Brussels sprouts that finished off my day. So I just love cooking things in the Instant Pot and having things ready and having them prepared. And so it takes me at most two minutes to make a meal because I just pull things out of the refrigerator and heat them if they need to be heated. And I've even gotten now where I eat asparagus, the little skinny ones, uh, raw, you know, and it's kind yeah. of fun because they're so snappy. They yeah. are. They're nice and crunchy. And it, yeah. They're, and they're I do delicious. limit my beans to, to one cup a day on average because you can actually get too much protein on a plant based diet, which mm -hmm. is hard for most people to understand. Yeah. So, beans and rice and, and vegetables and, you know, all the good things that grow in the garden. You know, it's just so simple. And on my, uh, my journey, my group on Facebook, I do put pictures of what I eat every day. And um, that keeps me accountable too. In fact, recently I asked this, this question in my group. I said, in a single word, what has helped you stay compliant on a whole food plant-based diet? Because this is true for people with heart attacks like Al and people with a myriad of diseases like I had, not only the weight, but all of the other things I had. And it was interesting. There must have been 30 different words that came up. Uh, but the top four or five, number one was health. People enjoy their health and that's what propels them to want to stay on this. Preparation was another high mark. Uh, living this life was a, another one. Simplicity ranked high. And why, the why they started uh, made them want to eat this way. That why continues to work for them. And for a number of people, animals was what perpetuates them eating this way. They're so thankful that animals don't have to die so we can live. And uh, let's see what else. Oh, and a discomfort or pain or crisis. That was another one. And there were so many other words. And I thought it was kind of interesting that some people mentioned people. Some people mentioned that knowing me helped. Some said Dr. McDougall, Dr. Esselstyn. One said God, one said Jehovah, one said Jesus. One has a knowledge is really important and ethics and the lifestyle and and being empowered and dedication i mean there's so many wonderful wonderful words that i learned from people in the group uh that has helped them stay compliant and i think when you believe when when you finally understand that this is how our bodies this is our food this is what was intended for us to thrive on and once you learn that and uh, sometimes it does take a crisis to get you to really yeah. rethink things. Um, it's wonderful when people like Ben, my husband, he changed from the propaganda that came in on the podcast on the TV. And he started thinking about the earth and the planet and, and the animals too. And it's a win-win for everyone, for climate change. Whatever your perspective is, it, this is the answer. So... That's uh, what I think will help a lot of people. And everyone's on their own journey and everyone has their own reason and everyone has whatever motivates them. But it has to finally come from within us. You know, you can listen to motivators and inspirers, but that's out there. 
But when you embrace it yourself, it makes a big difference. Can I talk? <laughs> we lost her. No, we didn't. Oh, we did. We, we lost your audio. We've lost your audio. I'm going to give Al a chance oh. to chime in about what he eats. But before that, I wanted to talk about Esther, because first of all, she's got the Esther's nutritional journey, which we gave the links to for her Facebook group. And I love how you asked your group to give them a word, give you a word that make them uh, commit to the lifestyle, because you actually wrote this book, which is from Donuts yeah. to Potatoes. And in it, you have like the word of the day for every day, which, or the thought of the day. So, but mo mostly the word of the day. And so that I think it was so cute that you asked people to, uh, you want to tell us, to us about your book? Because I wanted, I thought it was really cute that you asked your, your followers to chime oh, in for a word yes. of their day. <laughs> Thank you for pointing that out because I hadn't made that connection. But every morning I do think of a word and then I kind of expound on it. I want people to think and to reevaluate what they're doing in their life. It's not a how-to book, but I love it. And every day I do a video uh, where I read from my book. And um, it's just, it's been wonderful. I don't promote it. I, I, I'm i glad, I'm, I'm, I love it too. And I, like today, I went and I read three years ago today, I was on a podcast with some little kids in London and it was just a, an anniversary. So these uh, types of things that I read refresh my mind to of where I, what I was thinking about three years ago. But I put this book together out of, a request from people saying, Esther, you should write a book and put all these words together. And I said, well, I give you the words free every day. Why would you want to buy a book? I mean, it's free, you know, and I still do that. In fact, I've done it for 2019, 2020, 21, and now I'm in 22. But I did put those words together from 2019. The book came out in 2020 and uh, it is available on Amazon. And all of the uh, royalties that I receive from that book do go to Dr. McDougall's foundation because his book, the Maximum Weight Loss Book uh, Program, is what saved my life. And I'll be eternally thankful that after 70, well, seven, I'm mean 78 now, 78 years of going to church, I never learned these tools about how to handle uh, an overeating problem. You know, I was always just taught, oh, use moderation or use portion control. No. If you're an addict and you turn to food to 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 uh, satisfy the longing of your heart, you know moderation doesn't help, and really abstinence is the answer, and it gives us so much freedom. So that's kind of the long story about the book, but I I do love it, and uh, and like I say, I'm really thankful to pay the proceeds to Dr. <clears throat> McDougall because um, you know when someone saves your life, what can you say? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So well said, and he's and that book has helped a lot of people, and we'll post links to that one as well because it is very helpful. Okay, so now Al, other yeah. than the food that you get because you have friends with benefits, what do you eat in a day? Well, I found when she asked me the same question, my answer is how I stay in the diet is system, because I I want to make systems out of everything. So every I happen to love oats. And so for the morning, I make oat groats, which is the least processed oatmeal you can buy. And I have a big bowl of that every single morning. Some mornings I, I eat too much, so I will only eat half of it. And then I'll eat the second half about 10 o'clock. So my system for lunch is to always have leftovers in the refrigerator. So Dottie knows to make more than just the two of us can eat. So there is always re uh, uh, leftovers in the refrigerators. And since she's a compliant cook and what we eat for dinner is compliant, then I know whatever I'm having for lunch. So I go in and when I, when I put the food away uh, after we eat, I put a date on it. So I eat whatever is the oldest in there. Now, food without me in it lasts a long time in there. So, uh, but, but I managed to keep up with it. <laughs> and she uses her own, so she eat whatever she likes, but that's all right. I make sure the refrigerator stays clean. And then for dinner, for instance, last night, I always make a salad and I buy um, bird's eye uh, 
uh, mixed vegetables. I think it's, uh, I can't remember the name of it now, but they're uh, peas and carrots and all corn. And corn and even some beans in there. And there's nothing else. There's no other spices or anything. So it's totally clean. I defrost that and then I will cut, chop up lettuce, put uh, small tomatoes on it. And Dottie will put in, uh, art, uh, she'll give me artichoke hearts to put on top of that. Maybe a little some beets and I'll put the beans on top of it. And I will use a no fat salad dressing. One of my favorites is California balsamic, which I have really liked. It's, as you point out, it's a little sweet, but I, I manage that. And also I keep those in the back of my car in case we go out and we have to eat lunch someplace. You can always get someplace that will give you a salad and then I put my own dressing on it. And since it doesn't need to be refrigerated, that's again, is the system that I use to stay compliant on the diet. So that's about it. I do, I will admit to cheating and let me show you how I cheat. Nobody, nobody has perfect willpower. You just don't. And if you look at willpower, you're going to, you're not going to have it. Look at it as information. The more information you have, the less likely you're going to do something that is detrimental to you. I mean, would you get on an airplane and you look at the tires and that one tire's got a, a, almost flat or it's got a, it, it may not survive a landing. Would you get on the airplane? Probably not. Or if the pilot was drunk, yeah. no, you wouldn't get on the airplane. So I think... I think if you look at, instead of willpower, look at it as information. Once we know, once I knew that, I, that these things were bad for me, and once I knew and believed that I could reverse heart disease, you better believe that I stuck to the diet. So hot, but you still get, you still have desires. You still have, want to cheat. So this is how I cheat. And I bought this in the market today. I looked at the label and what it is, is dried apple and the ingredients apple nothing else so they take an apple they dry it now it's not healthy it's not because it is processed but you know i don't eat it very often so right. it, it allows me to be human and have uh and fail at certain things so that's what that's what i eat during the day well, that's great. And and let's go back to talking about the oak roots because people oh. are not familiar with these kinds of things. We okay. People know about oatmeal and what they think, if they haven't been whole food plant-based, they think oatmeal is you take this stuff and you add hot water and mix it up and a minute later you have oatmeal. Oh, yeah. But that's, that's a very processed form. And our food doesn't just come out of a package. It originally comes from someeplace and then they yes. process it out. So, so talk about how you have these. Okay, oats. There's three kinds of oats. Oat growth is what horses eat. It looks like rice. Uh, and it, if you, and, but if you take that same growth, if you will, and cut it twice, that becomes steel cut oatmeal. And if you run it through steel, uh, steel rollers and press it, that becomes what you and I call rolled oats or oatmeal. Now, what I do is, I, and I learned this from uh, my friend Tammy, is I put it in the pressure cooker and cook a batch of it for, and it'll last me a week. And I, I put some, I put some uh, flax seeds in it for the, uh, for the nutrients in the flax seeds. And uh, do you I, grind those? Yes, I yes. grind the flax. I grind them fresh mm -hmm. um, because you get more nutrients that way. And then I put in blueberries because I love blueberries and they're very good uh, anti antioxidant. And that lasts me all week. Now I eat the cold. And the reason I started, I used to heat my oatmeal up. But I was on a cruise, a vegan cruise, and they had overnight oatmeal, and it was steel cut, but it was cold. And mm -hmm. I thought, that tastes really good. So I, on the oatmeal, I put blueberries, raspberries, and blackberries, and a banana. And I have a routine that I use that I, that I make jokes about, but I have nine of each, and I arrange them in a certain <laughs> way. 
<laughs> You're very I, methodical. <laughs> I am. I, I do that every morning and mm-hmm. it satisfies me. Now, sometimes I can't eat all of it. And as I say, I eat it again at 10 o'clock. But if you eat the whole groat, it takes longer for your system to digest it. And it takes longer for the whatever. I forget the... Uh, what your microbiome? It? No, the... Um, what is it when you... I don't know. I, I, It'll I, come I, to you in two minutes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It'll come to me after after we sign up. <laughs> Amy said, I just cooked those groats for the first time in the Instant Pot, and they're yummy. Yeah, yes, they yeah. are. They're very, they're, I like the texture. Yeah, ben likes it better, too. In fact, yeah. he... He's, he's now making it in the Instant Pot, too, and, and it's great. Yeah, we exchanged uh, Instant Pot recipes, and I'm going to start using hers. I'm, uh, somehow, mine hasn't been working lately. Right. So that's the best. Oh, and the thing that you have to do, and I, I didn't mention this, but it's really important to me, is you have to surround yourself with like-minded people, with people that are on this journey. And what is she showing them? <laughs> oh, can you say what the words say? Because we yeah. see those says, beautiful animals. This, this is for today, Friday, May 13th. It says, I choose carefully the people yes. I share my life with. Only positive, loving, joyous people are in my world. Oh, is That's that from, from your book from Friday? Uh, no, this is from Louise Hayes' calendar. Oh, Louise Hay- yeah, okay. Famous. Well, that's beautiful. Yes. See? Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. was very nice because all the people that are watching, we're, yeah. are, we're all surrounding it, ourselves that's with right. positive I, people. I may I started this without any help at all, and I sort of now feel obligated to help other people because I had such a tough time of it. it I really, if I wasn't dying, I'm not sure I could have stayed on this, but mm-hmm. without any help. Mm-hmm. But it, you, you, every you support people, and it gets. And she has been through the stages, and I've seen it. You first join a group to help people, and then after a while, you figure out the, the group is helping you. Yeah, and then yeah. after a while, you figure out you have become, uh, uh, you have to behave in this way because you have become uh, the group exactly. looks to you for yeah. leadership to, to eat that way. And you got, you know, criticized for letting something slip. Yes. Yeah. So it, it's really beneficial and you really should do it. And it, I think we're in the beginning of a movement. I really do. I do too. Marion said, wonderful interview. And Amy said, they are both such a success story of eating a whole food plant based lifestyle. Um, oh, Elizabeth wanted to know do you have, did you, you have to give up caffeine to get rid of all the body aches you were talking about earlier? Or can you have it as long as you stick to a plant based? I don't know. I gave up caffeine before I went on a plant-based diet. Yeah, it's a drug. Yeah. Yes. And we all have a choice. Yeah. Yes. And it is. I, I gave it up too because I was happy all the time and I didn't need to be over the top. I just, you know, I just feel so good all the time eating this way. And I just didn't want that stimulant anymore. And Ben gave it up because. Uh, it used to be when he drank coffee, then he wanted something sweet to go with it to neutralize mm-hmm. the acid. And so, you know, a lot of people don't drink coffee black. But, you know, don't don't be hard on yourself if you're not there yet. You know, this is a journey for all of it, us. Well, I, I gave it up because I go camping a lot. And it isn't always it. I try to make my I'm lazy. I try to make my life as convenient as possible. So if you're out in the boondocks and you're sleeping, where yeah. do you go to? You can't go to Starbucks. So yeah. when I get up in the morning, I feel that's good. I don't need anything to make me feel better. I'm feeling good. Yeah. So yeah. it's just convenient. Yeah, Amy, there's something else I would really like to mention that although I was morbidly obese and I did lose a total of 155 pounds, I want you to know all the other diseases that have been healed as a result of going whole food plant based. And if you, if any of you have this book, uh, oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah, show those pictures. But here's some of the other things I was also fighting, uh, and we're on my list. And I just, um, I, while you read that, I want to tell everybody yeah. that we're showing a slideshow of you and your husband, Ben, because you both transformed. And so we have some before or after pictures while you go ahead and talk. Go ahead. Yeah. But it was not only the obesity, that was what got me going because I was having knee problems. But listen to all of the other issues I had obesity, depression, GERD diverticulitis, bipolar, pre-diabetes, 
hypertension, sleep apnea, gastritis, pancreatitis, anemia, insomnia, vision problems, gallbladder disease, hyperlipidemia, constipation, hypothyroidism, and knee problems. So, I mean, there were so many things going on in my body that I had no idea that I was even and sick. And you thought you were healthy. And I thought mm -hmm. I was healthy. I just knew I was obese, but I mean, I could do anything I wanted to do. We traveled and got around until I was brought to my knees with couldn't. pain and I couldn't walk and I was fear, fear of not being able to continue to travel is what was my changing moment. Yep. And I think we all just have to discover what our why is. And not all of us have found it yet, but uh, they say, find the why that makes you cry. Well, I have just really enjoyed meeting you, Al, and having you back again, Esther. It's just what a combination. You guys are really great, great guests. And uh, and Smith said, wonderful guests. Thanks. And oh, well, I have to tell you, Swellen said, Esther looks fabulous. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I knew Al was going to say something. I was hoping that somebody would say <laughs> something that I could say. <laughs> but okay, peace loving said Al's story is very motivating. I heard him first time. So I guess this is the first time that he's her, peace loving has heard your story. So there you go. <laughs> and Pam said, thanks for having these champions on. Aww. So that's nice too, isn't it? Well, I really wanted to thank you guys for coming on the show. It's just so much fun to have you. And you, you're just so inspirational for everyone. And and again, the theme of this show was it's never too late, right? So is it too never late? never too late. At 80 years old, if I can do it, anybody can do it. Yeah. And Esther? Yeah, I'll be, I'll be starting my 80th year after October of this year. Right. And it's so it's never too late. And, and you just... Been so, so inspirational to have, have you on, and I'm sure that there are people that are ready to get started uh, soon just because of what you guys said. And I wanted to uh, thank you so much for being on. I also wanted to tell, tell them once more, I'm going to tell everybody once more where they can find you. So, Al, you have your website called Staying Alive, WFPB, which stands for Whole Food Plant Based, Staying Alive wfpb.com and we'll have that in the show notes as well and you on facebook esther you have a group called esther's nutritional journey and we'll also put um links to that one as well and i wanted to also thank oh okay marion said i commented about his skin looking great <laughs> okay <laughs> well there oh and and Carolee said, neither one looks their age. <laughs> neither one of us act our age either. <laughs> okay. And, um, well, Peace Loving wanted to know, and if you could tell us really quick, what, what is the reason to eat no salt? Is, is low salt an option? Um, I have a tendency to high blood pressure, and the human body only needs like a half of a teaspoon of salt and if you look at everything there's way too much salt in it so it's salt the human body needs salt but it doesn't need all the salt that it's getting yeah it yes. hurts your kidneys yeah. hurts your blood pressure blood pressure hurts the kidney yeah yes and it I, occurs naturally in all the whole food plant-based foods that we have it does. there is salt and if we it just does. had that and didn't eat processed food which is loaded with salt and right. for example, a slice of bread has more salt in it than a potato chip because it's embedded inside of the, of the dough. And if we just didn't have any of that processed foods and we just had the, the plant-based foods, we would get enough salt for, more, for our yeah. diet. Yes. And yeah. more protein, not more than enough protein, et cetera, et cetera, all the yeah. other nutrients. Yeah. I, right. I do want to say though that Dr. McDougall does advocate putting a little bit of salt on your food if that is necessary to get you to eat the food. To transition. Yeah. To, to transition. transition. But don't stir it in or you lose the hit. And for me... The hit, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and for me, I know I don't salt my food now and I just enjoy the natural... I enjoy naked food now. And so... Uh, and when I do eat something with salt in it, like in a restaurant or something, it does activate my brain and it does drive me it to want more. Makes you want more. to eat more. And that's yes. why they put it in processed food. 
Absolutely. Yes. So. Well, I want to ask all of you guys that are watching and listening, tell us what you're going to remember. What's your takeaway? And I wanted to tell you to stay tuned for a special announcement. Just Has Voice, I want to thank Just Has Voice because she did the promos and she did the introduction and the countdown. And she's just been so amazing with all the things that she's done to help promote our episode today. And Just Has Voice, Please tell us who's coming up next. Memory loss that disrupts daily life is not a typical part of aging. Board-certified family medicine physician, Dr. Jeffrey Pierce, will discuss how to prevent and heal Alzheimer's and dementia. Join us Friday, May 20th, 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific, on Be Green with Amy Live. Well, I do want to thank all of you that have been watching. You're the reason why I'm here and Alan Esther. That's why they came on because they want to talk to you and they want you to tell your friends and family and loved ones all about this wonderful lifestyle and how it can really help heal you. And I wanted to ask all of you to do what my Uncle Lou used to tell me on the phone to do. To go ahead and take your right hand and grab your left shoulder and take your left hand and grab your right shoulder. Now squeeze. And that's a hug from me to you. And if you guys would like to join me and Esther and Al and comment my tagline, which is be strong, be well, and be green. Are you ready, Esther and Al? Yes. Okay. Oh, that's a nice long hug. Okay. Until I see you guys again, remember, be strong, be well, and be, be green. green. <laughs> bye bye, everyone. Now you can listen to Be Green with Amy expert interviews wherever you go. Listen while walking, meal prepping, or traveling. Find Be Green with Amy on Apple, Google, Alexa, Amazon, or virtually anywhere you find podcasts. Be strong, be well, and be green with Be Green.